Carolyn Doobie here. What's the play for today? Well, today I'm playing around with one of the sparks of our inspiration that come free in my newsletters. Now, by the way, if you want to get this exact same spark, there's a link down below to have the computer elves send this one to you right away, and you'll also get signed up for my newsletter. Now, how am I going to use this? Well, it's going to be in an art journal page, and I'm going to use a little found poetry with it. Now that's where you look in a book and find words that you put together, rearrange them to make your own kind of sayings. Well, I decided to use a Danielle Steele novel that someone gave me recently. I thought I'd end up with something kind of racy for this one. Didn't quite turn out exactly as I planned. Well, I'm cutting out the spark of our inspiration here. Could I have ripped this instead or could I have left it on the big sheet of paper? Absolutely, I could do it any way I want. After all, these are sparks of our inspiration designed for you to use however makes you happiest. Now for me, I felt like cutting this one out today. I've got a gessoed piece of cardboard there that's gonna be the page I'm working on because I bound a bunch of them together and create a cardboard journal with them. And what I'm gonna do is figure out the best place to put the spark of our inspiration. Since I really have no idea where this is going, it really doesn't matter where I put it. So as you saw me sort of moving it around on the page, I was trying to see, hey, where does it feel right? And nothing really called to me, so I basically just picked one and I'm sticking it down. Now, if you've got an inkjet print, you may want to put a thin layer of gel medium on top, kind of like what I'm doing here with the blade, or you can use something like an old um, hotel key card or you know expired credit card to just get a thin layer of that gel medium on top to seal it. Again, the Sparks of Inspiration will work with inkjet prints, laser prints, whatever you've got available to you. I say that's the best thing to print them on. And the special kind of paper that I use, El Cheapo copy paper <laughs> that I get at the copy store. So not even a fancy paper to do this. Well, all that white space, yeah, it's not going to be white very long. I got to get some color on there. You saw the precision with which I sort of put some splots of that fluid paint on there. And now I'm just going to spread it around with a paintbrush. Now, if I don't want it on quite that heavily, which I've decided I don't, I'm going to grab one of the fanciest tools in my toolbox, the baby wipe. And I'm just going to kind of smear stuff around here and there. My goal is to cover up the white space and not make the cardboard look so brown anymore. Now this isn't nearly enough color for me, so I'm going to bring in more of the rainbow. And what I'm doing right now is really warming myself up, following my impulses, and putting color wherever I feel like it. Now, do you think this is enough color for me? If you guessed no, you are absolutely correct, because I want more color on there. So how do I decide when I'm going to apply paint with a brush versus one of the blades versus my fingers? Wouldn't it be great if there was a formula or a way that you knew exactly which one to do when? Yeah, I think so too, but I don't have one of those. It's basically impulse, whatever strikes my mood. Um, and so sometimes it's with the fingers, sometimes it's with the brush, sometimes it's with the blade. There's really no rhyme or reason to it. I'm really just following the impulses of what the page is telling me it wants me to do. All right, well, somebody gave me their Danielle Smith novel. And so I'm going to do some found poetry out of here. I'm going to pick a random page out of this book. And I was hoping for a little bit of, a, you know, something racy to put in here. You know, living on the edge, cutting up a Danielle Steele novel. Who knows what I was going to find. So for found poetry, what I do is I look through the page and I see what phrases or words call to me. And I reassemble them together. So bit by bit, I'm finding little pieces in here. And my goal is to keep to just one single piece of paper, not trying to flip between a whole bunch of pages in the entire book, but really limiting myself to just that one page and seeing what I can put together. Now, I haven't glued the words down yet. I'm playing around with little gelatos here in color as I make my final decision if I want to go with these words and glue them down. So what were the words that I found? Well, here's what it says. Jack was cautious. She asked me if I had something in common. An easy smile, he said. She couldn't argue with that. Now, I have to say, this doesn't make a terrible amount of sense. It's not like it's a complete plot all wrapped up in these few words. But the one thing that came into my mind after I was reading this all put together was, you don't know Jack. <laughs> so this little bit of poetry that I've put together, yeah, it may not win awards, but it was fun to do and it's fun to have on the page. So I am going to glue it down and I am going to keep it. Now, here's a public service announcement for clean hands. If you have a bunch of stuff on your hands and you're gluing stuff down this way, you will transfer the color. So if you don't want that to happen, you might want to think about washing your hands. Now, I wipe mine off on a baby wipe, and that's pretty much as far as I want to go on cleaning my hands off. And I'm just going to try and be careful, because what happens if a little bit of color gets on there? You know what I'd call it, an oops, an outstanding opportunity presenting suddenly.
Now, if you'd like to get this spark of art inspiration sent directly to your inbox, there's a link down below the video. That way you can have the computer elves pop it right on over to you. And what about turning this piece of cardboard into a bound journal? Well, that's easy peasy, I promise. And I show you step by step how to do it in my free workshop called Permission to Play. And yep, there's a link for that down below too. And now for the impatient part of this, I'm going to use a fine liner, which is filled with white acrylic ink, and I am going to start drawing around some of the shapes. Now, I'm not very patient, so I don't like to wait for things to dry. And waiting for this to dry feels like hours. So what am I going to do? I am not going to wait that long. I am going to cheat and just grab a piece of paper nearby, which happens to be that book text I cut up, and I'm going to blot some of it off that way it'll dry a whole lot faster. Well, thanks so much for joining me for today's play. Now, even though this page is just about finished, it doesn't mean the play has to end here. Hit that subscribe button so you'll see more of my videos. And of course, head on over to the blog at acolorfuljourney.com and check that out. There's lots of play happening over there. Thanks so much for letting me be a part of your colorful journey.